What is up everybody? This is your guy Kali and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today's video is the first in what I hope to be a long running series where I take a look at low cost mechanical keyboards. Now of course cheap doesn't mean free so the cost of these keyboards is definitely going to start adding up and because of that I want to thank today's sponsor Skillshare for making this video possible but more about that later on. For now, I want to preface things by saying I am nowhere near an expert when it comes to mechanical keyboards. I have posted a few gaming keyboard reviews in the past, but those have all been membrane. However, even if I'm not an expert, this is not my first mechanical keyboard. That honor actually goes to this Dake 82 with Cherry MX Black switches that I found at a thrift store for a whopping $2. And even if it was just two bucks, it is still fully functional and sounds lovely. However, this is my first 60% board. And to be perfectly honest, I never really saw the appeal of them. I've always preferred full size boards. Even after I acquired the Dake 82, that didn't change. But that all changed the day I tried editing a video with this Cherry ML4100, which coincidentally, I also found at a thrift store for quite a decent price. Once again, this is a mechanical board with cherry low profile black switches, and this allowed me to recline in my chair while editing instead of leaning over my full size keyboard. Ever since then, I've been in love. But enough about my past. This is the Lushu Jun DK61 60% or 61 key mechanical keyboard, and is one of the lowest cost 60% mechanical keyboards that I've encountered on Amazon. Coming in at $45, though as of the recording of this video, it is currently on sale for $40, and that might still be the case by the time you watch this. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't go for the lowest cost of the 60% mechanical keyboards, that simply has to do with the features on offer. And while we're on the topic, I might as well mention that I have seen three distinct tiers when it comes to the 60% mechanical keyboards under about $90 to $100. On the lowest end, we have the $35 to $40 range, which have an integrated USB cable, unlike this board, which has a detachable USB Type-C, as well as Bluetooth 5.0, unlike the $35 to $40 boards. Also, the $35 to $40 boards are going to have just a single color of LED, or if they do indeed have multicolor LEDs, the color pattern is going to be fixed. Unlike this board, which has full RGB, 20 lighting modes, including one that is customizable, but more on that later. Also, this particular keyboard does have reprogrammable keys using the software provided by the manufacturer, and I don't know if the $35 to $40 keyboards have that feature. Also, the features I mentioned for this keyboard do seem to be pretty standard in the second tier of these lower cost mechanical keyboards coming in at around $45 to $50, as well as the third tier of these lower cost 60% mechanicals, which come in at around the $55 to $65 range. Though that third tier also typically comes with hot swappable keys, which means you can use a special tool to pull the key switch out of your keyboard and replace it with anything you want. So for example, if you got tired of the clicky keys, you can pull the switch out and replace it with a linear key. But since this is a tier two board, it doesn't have that feature. Also, some of the switches in the $55 to $65 boards are optical and not purely mechanical. And what that means is that the key switches on those boards use an infrared beam as opposed to a physical connection like these do. And every time you press a key, you're breaking that beam as opposed to pushing two pieces of metal together. Now, beyond that $55 to $65 range, you're going to have the more well-known name brand boards like Razer and Ducky, and we're not going to be talking about those today. However, if you did find a few 60% keyboards online in the $25 to $30 range, let me go ahead and tell you that nine times out of 10, those are actually gonna be membrane keyboards, and that other one time out of 10 is just going to be a set of keycaps. So be sure to double check your order before paying. Oh, and one more quick tangent about the membrane 60% keyboards. After my last keyboard review, the Booga one-handed keyboard from Five Below, I did a little bit of research on some wholesale sites using that keyboard as a pricing reference. And it turns out it might actually be possible for Five Below to start carrying $10, 60% boards, 
Some of which actually claim to be mechanical, but I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. And I would love to see 60% keyboards in that store, even if they're just membrane. It's a great starting point for people getting into different profiles of keyboards. With all of that information out of the way, I guess I should probably talk about the key layout on this board. Because while looking through the various models of these keyboards, I found that not all of the secondary functions on your keys are going to be the same. Heck, not even the location of the function key is the same between these. I've seen it in pretty much every location on this bottom right hand bar here. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them had it on the left hand side as well. So as a quick overview, we have the function keys on your number keys, as well as the plus and minus. The tilde slash grave is here on the escape key. The tab key is actually a factory reset for some of the various functions we'll be talking about later. The R key allows you to toggle between wired and wireless mode. This whole block here is going to be your standard print screen, scroll lock, pause, insert home, page up, page down, delete, and end. Over here on P we have increased brightness and on left bracket we have decrease brightness. On backslash, we have the key you hit to change the lighting pattern. On semicolon, we have the key you hit to increase the speed of your lighting pattern. And on apostrophe, we have the key you hit to decrease the speed of your lighting pattern. And yes, I didn't get the two of these mixed up. You hit the arrow pointing left to increase and the arrow pointing right to decrease. The enter key will change the color of the pattern where applicable. And over on forward slash, alt, menu and control, we have the arrow keys. Also, if you hold down function and hit the Windows key, you lock it, which means whenever you hit the Windows key, it will not bring up the menu unless you unlock it first. Obvious jump cut because I forgot to mention a couple of other keys, like how the media keys are on A through H, and in order they are play pause, back navigation, forward navigation, mute, volume down, and volume up. Also on Z, X, and C, we have three different Bluetooth device profiles. Also included with the Lushu Jun DK61, we have a keycap puller, a really nice braided USB Type C cable with gold finish tips, though it does seem to be USB 2.0, as well as the manual. Now, this isn't a very large manual, as it only includes the key combinations, the specifications, a couple of troubleshooting tips, but most importantly, it also includes a QR code and web address for the programming software. And it would probably be surprising to some of you to know that that bit.ly address is going to take you to a Google Drive account which hosts the software. Honestly, that's a weird way to do it, but it works. And in some ways is a bit more reliable than going to a website for one of these companies because those tend to disappear the moment the manufacturer loses interest. All right, here we have the software for the DK61, which is for some strange reason called TK10. And fortunately, it's pretty straightforward. Up top, you have the four tabs with the first one being assignment, which is where you set what each key on the keyboard is going to do. Lighting, where you select your lighting pattern, as well as its color, brightness, and speed where applicable. As you can see, there are 20 different patterns, and as such, I'm not going to be demonstrating them today, mainly due to the fact that it's going to pretty much double the length of the video. I know this because there's actually a version of this video that has the demo. However, if you do want to see it, let me know down in the comments. And if enough people chime in, I'll release the lighting demo as its own standalone thing. The spectrum tab is where we set up the custom lighting profile. And you can change the color of each individual key to whatever you'd like. Just keep in mind that this is going to be a static profile and not animated. Last but not least, we have the macro tab, which is where you can make your own, well, macros. And the easiest way to do that is just to record one. Now I'm going to set it to the default one millisecond delay between each key press due to the fact that I don't want them all firing off at once. And then I'm going to type out my macro. Of course, a macro doesn't do anything if it's not assigned to a key. So let's go back to the assignment tab, select the escape key, and then we get to select between either the default setting, disabling the key, the macro, launching a program or a keyboard function. Of course, since we're doing the macro, I'm going to go ahead and select the one I just created and click save. 
Also on the left hand side of the screen, you've probably noticed that you can save and load profiles and that makes things easier if you want to switch between things without having to reprogram each individual key every single time. As for what sync program does, I have no idea, mainly due to the fact that it is not mentioned in the manual or even the official companion video that you can find in the same Google Drive as the software itself. Alright, I guess the time has come for me to demonstrate the typing ability of this keyboard, but first, a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. While there are a ton of different topics to choose from on Skillshare, personally, I've been doing a deep dive into video production with a side order of productivity. Because, as some of you have probably noticed, I'm prone to going on the occasional accidental hiatus. And for a while now, I've been trying to get a handle on that, and my track record shows I've not been the most successful. This is where the class Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last by Thomas Frank comes in because not only does he provide tips to help point you in the right direction when it comes to keeping yourself on a schedule, but he actually talks about what you can do when things go off the rails and how to keep that from happening again. Because uh, things definitely have gone off the rails a couple of times for me, AKA my multiple accidental breaks. And that mainly has to do with the fact that I find things to review constantly and I've not been the best about prioritizing which ones I should get to first, then my backlog builds up, and it gets kind of intimidating. However, I have been putting some of the tips from this class into practice, and you probably noticed I released a nice large batch of videos recently, and while I don't think I'm going to keep up that pace going forward, I do plan on releasing videos a little bit more frequently than I used to. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Since we're not going to be using this in wired mode, the first thing I need to do is turn the keyboard on. There we go. And now is where I should also point out the fact that while this keyboard will remember what light mode you had it set to, it will not remember your color. It's going to choose the highest possible option, which typically means you're going to be getting the random RGB, unless it's going to be one of the lighting modes that only has rainbow available, or it is the custom mode. But for now, let me go ahead and Set it to green because, as you can probably tell, I like green. I'll also take it out of wired mode by holding down function. And as you can see, the R key is lit up right now. That means it's in wired mode. Now it's in wireless mode, as you can tell by the fact that one of the Bluetooth profile keys turned blue. And for this part of the video, I'm going to be connecting it to my tablet. So let's go ahead and move the keyboard down and bring the tablet in. Let's go ahead and Turn it on, swipe, activate Bluetooth, and there we go, get profile one started. It is now in pairing mode. And here's a quick jump cut because I completely forgot I had something saved to Bluetooth profile one. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pair a new device on my tablet, and there it is, the Lushu June DK61. So I'll tap that. And we're paired. As you can see, I've got a little indicator there showing that I'm connected to a keyboard style device. Also, I should point out that the macro that I made earlier was indeed saved to the keyboard. So until I do a factory reset, every time I hit escape, it's going to type out fart. 
because I'm mature. Now, some of you are probably wondering what kinds of keys are used in this board. So using the puller included, let's go ahead and just pluck that key really quick. And as you can see, this uses blue switches, which are the clicky variety. Though red linear switches, which are silent, are also available. As for the brand of switch, let's switch over to a quick macro shot and show you that these are Zorro switches. And there's not really that much information going around about these. The most information Desk Authority has is that these are clones of Cherry MX Blues. Though I have seen one comment on Amazon claiming that these are manufactured by Kale, I have yet to be able to verify that. And because of that, I can't tell you how many actuations the manufacturer claims that these are capable of, nor can I say how reliable they are. So keep that in mind going forward. And that is pretty much everything I have to say about the Lushu Jun DK61. This weird little $45, 60% mechanical keyboard that, in my personal opinion, isn't half bad. The biggest complaints that I really have are the fact that this uses Zorro switches, as opposed to something else that's cheap but more well known like Altimu or Gatoron, and also the location of the USB type C port. Now that might seem like a weird complaint, but the placement of that port means that the PCB inside of this keyboard is not going to be compatible with some of the aftermarket cases you can get. So I won't be upgrading this all plastic construction for something like anodized aluminum. But that's just my inner modder talking. For most people, that's not going to be an issue. And with those caveats out of the way, I've got to say, this is a pretty dang decent board for the $45 I paid for it, and even more so if you managed to grab it for $40 or under. And it's also made me very curious about the keyboards that I mentioned previously. Those $35 to $40 mechanicals, those $55 to $60 mechanicals, and heck, even those $25 to $30 membrane 60% boards. I kind of want to check all of those out, and if this video performs well, I'm definitely going to do that. But for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.